Hello. Nico Jones. Hey, how you doing, Todd? Good, buddy. How are you? Good. Right on, man. Thank you for doing this. Uh, the last yeah. time that we talked, you just released a Rock Supreme. A uh, couple of years later, a couple odd years later, the new album Power Trio is out on the 27th. Largely written during the pandemic or what's yeah, going on? Yeah, all of it written during the pandemic. I mean, before the pandemic, we had about five or six ideas kicking around that eventually made it onto the album, but they weren't fully realized songs or just riffs right so the whole album was written during the pandemic um yeah and, and what was that like was it much different than the normal like writing and recording yeah. obviously you took so the mask like off a, the scene but yeah so we're a band that you know we're an organic band that you know we bash out songs in front of each other for hours until something you know kind of sparks and uh this this one we couldn't be in a room together. So we had to send files back and forth, which is something that I've heard other bands do, but I've always, you know, been skeptical of it. Um, so yeah, it was great that we did it and it worked, you know, so much of the skepticism after the first song was written faded and we just proceeded to do all the songs. And, and it, you know, when we had nothing to do, there's no tours, there's nothing other than staying at home. All day long it allowed me from my end to like work on lyrics a little more guitar solos a little longer than i usually would <laughs> uh melody lines so so as as much as it was a new and weird kind of way to do it there was some good good uh outcomes from it as well so you know i think power trio stands alongside our other previous albums without any kind of real um yeah, it doesn't sound like oh, that's the record that was written in right. the pandemic. So it, it it it's pretty consistent, I think, with the previous albums. I'm just gonna turn on the light here because I can't see too much. Oh sure. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. Oh, that's okay. Yeah, I, I was I was wondering like what what is that like? What is it like writing when you're not with your buddies? Like maybe just talk about a few tracks in particular. Were there any songs that came together quickly? Because normally, for whatever reason, there's always certain songs that do that, right? Was that the case for writing Power Trio? Yeah, so the first song we wrote in the pandemic from beginning to end was a song called Blue Jean Denim Jumpsuit, track six. And, uh, you know, JC arranges most of our songs. So he had arranged the riffs that I kind of sent him I did some vocals for it and he played bass on it and I played guitar on it and there was just a metronome. And if you, anyone was to hear it, it just doesn't sound like much, but once Rich sent us back his drums and JC put it all together, the song just, just the energy came out and that was really eye opening for me. And I, I really, that's the, the moment when I thought, yeah, we could really do this. It sounds right. like on par with, any song that we've written that really jumped out on the album and and still that's remains one of my favorite songs off the record and that was the song that kind of for me uh inspired me personally to to keep going jc was the one who said look we got to do this no matter what mm. and of course i said okay you know we'll do it of course if if he said that we got to do it or else we're right. done as a band, you know, because if this thing is over in a year and we don't have a record out, we're screwed. You know, you, you for a band like us, <clears throat> as long as we've been around 25 years, we're still not a legacy band where we can just tour on our number one hits. We have to write new albums and give us an excuse to tour and, you know, to live. So so that's what we do. And we have to be ready. If we had 10 number one hits, we could have just coasted through the pandemic and then waited till it's over and then just go back on tour and play those you know dozen number one songs and everybody will be happy but we're not there um so that's what we got to do uh got to keep making records and so that's why jc said we got to do this during the pandemic and i didn't want to i wanted to just curl up into a ball and tell tap me on the shoulder when it's over yeah i still have that feeling i i really sure. you know I think a lot of people do. I think, yeah, I was going to say that. I think most people do. So how yeah. did you get through the pandemic? How did you get through COVID then? If you're not 
you know, you're not making your livelihood. You're not playing shows and like you're still selling merch. Like, how did you make it through? Um, it's not over. So ask me when it's over. True. Uh, you know, mentally, what kept me going was this record because I wasn't I wasn't even watching movies. I, I would see posts from people going, yeah, I watched. I watched all these movies and I watched all this TV and I, and I was like, wow, I can't even like pause my brain for 30 minutes to watch a, movie, a 90 minute movie. And uh, I would, I would watch movies like 30 minutes. It would take me like three days to watch one movie. It still does. I can't really watch can't movies from beginning to end. No, I, I can't. Uh, Friday nights is when there's like a, 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 a time set aside to watch movies at my place but even then i find myself like picking up my smartphone and you know looking i'm i'm just waiting for that piece of news that will break everything yeah i think everyone is you know like yeah the fact that a year later we've got vaccines and people are fully vaccinated is amazing like it's a miracle and that should not be understated um i'm hoping a year from now it's going to be even better uh And so what's kept me going is making this record. Um, I don't do my podcast these days because I just can't, like I said, I can't pause my mind for more than half an hour. And uh, yeah, so, so I, I, I don't know how I'm getting by these days because I'm not reading books and I'm not watching movies and I'm, it's, I've what I have done is started listening to music again because I really didn't listen to any music in 2020. Mm-hmm. So that's that's slowly coming around. So things are things are changing. What are you listening to lately? Um, well, there's a new Quicksand album. I want to listen to that. There's I'm listening to a, a lot of old metal uh, in the car. Uh, you know the same same old stuff judas priest merciful fate exodus king's x those are actually that's all the, the go to yeah that's all i really listen to is like not old, a bad thing man yeah old king's x old priest uh yeah. old x well all exodus and um uh king diamond and merciful fate wow wow it's going so back that's to all i'm listening fate. to yeah. So um, I, uh, that, that's, what's keeping me going during the pandemic. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I love the groove of uh ship of lies. Everyone knows it's getting old. It's like yeah. the, the ship of lies. Uh, yeah. So thanks. Uh, yeah. That's uh that actually mu- uh, all the music was written by JC. That song is all JC's. I wrote the lyrics and the melody, hmm. um, the vocal melody, but that's all JC. Yeah, and uh, and another favorite of mine, uh, "Raise Some Hell." I mean, riff rock will never, ever get old. Yeah, I mean that's what we do, you know. And I, yeah, that was yeah, that was a a, a different kind of a song for us, but we uh, we thought it was great, so we put it on the record. We've got all these like, we also have all these like songs that no one's ever heard, like that's right. more Americana than than um interesting you know, hard rock yeah but i don't know if that'll ever see the light of day uh, maybe uh danko i'm not sure if uh, if you if you caught a tweet that i sent out about a week week and a half back where i'd said that i, I was going to be talking to you and that there was a surprise for this zoom oh i didn't catch that so todd kearns <laughs> was going to crash this zoom oh man He's a, He's a he's a longtime buddy of mine, and I know that you guys get along quite well as well. But he's uh, he's currently on a on an airplane to Vegas, so he wasn't able to crash. But um, he's I just going love home. the podcast that you guys have done together. They're really super super easy listens. How long how long have you known Todd for? So Todd Kearns and I we have an, a very interesting uh, relationship. We have never met. Oh, no and, way. No. We've never met. There was one time we played with Slash at Pink Pop in Holland, and I knew Todd was in the band. And we did, I, you know, I, I didn't, I didn't want to be one of those dudes who comes up to him and goes, "Hey, man, Canada, man," you know, like he gets enough of that. So we just kept her. We had to go anyway. So when they, when they finally got to the festival grounds, we were kind of on our way out. Um, but 
I think uh, a couple of years before the pandemic, we kind of connected and um, we just, yeah, I just noticed him on Twitter and then Instagram and we just direct messaged each other. And throughout the pandemic, Todd has been like a good um, person to like, to know. And it's just been great to, I don't know. It's just, it's just, I like the fact that Todd is there and uh, we've, He's just a good person to go to. And the times I've been on his podcast and, and the two talks and stuff, it's been um, a nice respite from the pandemic. And it's given me a break at times that I needed it. And it's just nice to know that like there's other musicians out there going through what I'm going through. And Todd's one of those dudes, you know, and he, he, he's been on all my podcasts uh, a couple of times as well on one and he was on my other podcast. So um, yeah, he's a stand up guy and I really respect him. And he's uh, guys, it, it's been, I won't forget it. You know, like I was on the two talks twice and both times were pretty memorable. He plus he introduced me to Darby Mills who I've never met, but now nice, the head you know, we're, <laughs> nice. we're, we're social media buddies, you know, so it's, it's, it's been nice. And so when the pandemic is over and we start touring again, um, meeting Todd will be a uh, pretty, pretty awesome. Yeah. That's too bad. Yeah. I texted him a couple of days ago. I was like, Hey, don't forget Danko on Monday. And he goes, Oh, fuck. Sorry, bro. On a plane, won't be able to make it this time, but uh, say hi to him for me. So, yeah, he's he's a, I, I a, all guy. respect, to, yeah, yeah, all respect to Todd. He's yeah, awesome, yeah. man. Yeah. And, and one of the things, um, you know, f- that of course all your fans know is how politically driven that you are and outspoken that you are. And that's one of the things I think that makes you so, like, beyond the music, I think that's one of the things that makes you so endearing. I think that people I, like that. I've never been political. Um, it's only in the last few years, uh, really? where I've kind of, uh, I've kind of publicly stated where I stand on things. I've never, we've never been a political band. I don't like polarizing people. Um, but it's only during these days where things are so div- divided. Um, but I'm not saying anything controversial. At least I don't believe I am. All I'm saying is don't be racist don't be a homophobe, don't be sexist. And as long as your health allows, get the vaccine to help old people and kids at this stage in 2021. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not, I do not think I'm saying anything out of line, anything controversial. I think I'm pretty, I'm towing the line. I'm not going out on a limb. I'm, as far as I know, I'm saying some pretty common sense things. Um, 100%. I would, I would never say anything that, that, that um, crosses the, those lines. So I don't really feel comfortable being tagged as a political person or a political musician or, you know, one of those political, we're not. I, I just like, but in 2021, it is kind of controversial to say, don't be racist. <laughs> it's so, because it's gotten to that point where people are so brazen now. Um, and it could be just the social media feeds that I follow that, that always post these, you know, like f- smartphone videos of racist people or, or anti-maskers. And it gives you um, the feeling that, Oh my God, they're they're the majority. But sometimes no, it's oh, just gone just viral them. because it's just so out of the ordinary. Right. But it gives you a false sense of so. I, sometimes I really don't know. But when you think about anti-mask rallies and people like being very pu- public and very loud about their anti-mask stand stands, um, you forget the silent majority already got vaccinated, are all following guidelines and. It just kind of screws you with your head sometimes when you see all these like videos online. So I, I really don't know. All I know is what I've always done since I was, you know, became, graduated from being a teenager to an adult is can I look myself in the eye and um, 
yeah, everything I post, I don't really think I'm posting anything crazy. No, but you're right though. It's like, you, you know, if you, if you talk about anti-vaxxers or, you know, um, no vac, you know, I don't want to get the vaccine. I'm not a sheep. If you bring that up, that's political, even though all your, that you truly is common sense. But it's, it's like but nobody it's talks nobody talks about polio because everybody's vaccinated for it. Right. I just, <clears throat> I, you know, I just feel like <clears throat> I lost my train of thought. But yeah, it was pretty yeah. much going to reiterate what I just said. What do you, What do you think about the? I think that it was a couple of days ago that they had said that they're thinking about mandatory vaccines for federal workers. Yeah, I'm, I'm totally for it as long as each individual's health isn't compromised further, um, then absolutely. I know that there's a certain percentage of the population that just can't get it, that just can't get it, even though they want to get it and they shouldn't be villainized. And I'm very careful to point that out when I do, you know, tweet or, or stuff like that. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll put something like, if you can, you know, if your health allows, I think the last tweet I did, I, I didn't, I just said like in bold, get vaccinated because, you know, there is a, there is a story in Toronto where a parent knowingly brought their kid to like preschool with COVID symptoms. And now 20 kids in the class have COVID. Right. And these are like under 12. And then how how many, yeah. and, And then how many of those kids live with their grandparents? So it's just, it just goes on and on. And it's like that, that kind of thinking is dangerous and people don't realize the, 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 the repercussions and, and the waves that it creates. Right. They're not thinking there's, there's no forward thinking. There's no empathy. Right. What are your thoughts on uh, Trudeau calling for a federal election? (laughs) Well, then now we're getting political. Um, I don't really want to get political. All right, I'll, um, I'll, I'll but, but, that's cool. That's cool. Because there are a couple other things I actually do want to know about. <laughs> okay, but, but, but yeah, that's um, yeah, I have, yeah, I don't really want to hear my opinion. Yeah, no, that's cool. It. Let's let's move on. So, I will say this: there's a Delta variant r- r- raging, and people have to like go to polls. So I don't know. That yeah. that that's all I I have to say about that. But yeah, fair, and that's that's yeah. kind of where I was going. Um. Yeah. You hear about those hologram shows that they're that they were that they're doing, like with Ronnie James Dio, and there was a couple other people. What do you think about what do you what are your thoughts on hologram shows? Um, I mean, at first, I would I would think like it's kind of sad that you know people are trying to you know chase after something that isn't there. But on the other hand, it might not be about that person who's passed away. It might be a way of everybody just getting together to celebrate that person's music. And that's kind of cool. If people can suspend disbelief that the person isn't really there, um, that's their decision to go. I personally don't think I would go unless I got free tickets and I would go out of curiosity. Um, But I wouldn't really like throw down my hard earned money because I want to see Dio live because that's you know I, I don't know I just more it's more of a novelty curiosity thing or spectacle at yeah. this stage but yeah. I also understand that it's a celebration of the person's music too so that's not it's not bad right. but the ticket should be cheap it, though it's weird and the tickets weren't cheap either really they, they oh, weren't man, this... no they're they pretty much I think they're pretty much full price which is like really that's I don't, weird like I don't know man 60 bucks to see Ronnie James Dio's hologram there's no guitar know. tech, man. There's no drum tech. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know I've only got a couple more minutes with you. I'll quickly blast through a few here. What did you think of the Vision Wanda series? Did you watch that? I haven't gone around to seeing it yet. Oh. I, I, I want to see it. Like I said, like TV shows and me these days. Yeah. It's hard to get around. I I, I still haven't seen the, the fall. What is it? The uh, Falcon? Oh, or the Winter uh, Soldier. Falcon Winter Soldier. Winter Soldier. Yeah, I haven't seen that. I haven't seen... What now, if, last or... time we talked, we talked about, uh, you know, I know that you're a comic book fan. So am I, we talked in, in depth about comics and shit. And at that point you hadn't watched like iron fist. 
you hadn't watched the I haven't Luke seen Cage. Iron Fist yet. I Luke saw Cage. Luke Cage. I saw the whole series. Yeah. Okay. Uh, wow, that was a while back. But um, a couple of years. Iron yeah. Fist. Yeah, Iron Fist. I haven't seen yet. Uh, yeah. yeah I, you just reminded me. I should actually. <laughs> All right. Uh, last question, because I you probably got ahead here. Uh, I don't think I've ever asked you this, but Star Wars or Star Trek? Oh, that is a good question. I don't get asked that very often. Oh, that's too hard to answer. I'd say, oh man, I think it's like, I have to say Star Wars, even though I, I, I want to say Star Trek. But then if I say Star Trek, I'm just trying to sound smarter than I am. Because then that would be like, oh, I'm a thinking man, sci- sci-fi guy. No, but uh, I-, I would say Star Wars. I mean, Star Wars. Like, as a kid, that yeah. monopolized my time, man. Like, that was the only thing I did was play Luke Skywalker. Yeah. I, I mean, I have some problems with Star Wars. Like, the, the I was actually talking about this yesterday. But um, I love Force Awakens, where, but where they took it afterwards, I didn't really like it for... The reasons that Star Star Trek made in the future, you know, there'll be all kinds of people together. You know, all the right. human race, you know, all the different races are together, and that is the bigger message I think about Star Trek that I like a lot. Whereas after Force Awakens, it kind of like I don't know what happened, but they were going in the right direction. Um, right. but anyways yeah it's, it's uh it is it, that, that's an aside but you know big picture i'd have to say star trek star wars would be oh, over, over star, star trek, trek. Yeah. yeah although i want to say star trek <laughs> i want to say star trek but i know it's star wars <laughs> yeah fair enough thank you thank you man again for joining us this morning congrats on power trio it is out wherever you buy music on august 27th uh, and you're easy to find. You're just simply at Danko Jones on social media. Yeah. And, yeah. And uh, uh, say hi to Todd for me. I will next time I talk to him for sure. And uh, we will see you online. All right. All right.